If I had to name the most important skill to learn for Power BI, it would be date tables. So these are what let you dynamically break down your data by month, quarter, year, fiscal year, fiscal quarter, whatever you want. You want to get year over year changes? That's a date table. You want to count things completed last week? That's a date table. If you want to exclude holidays from a measure, you can use a date table. You want your slicer to stick to the current quarter? You can do that with a date table. So clearly date tables are useful. There's easy ways to do them and there's trickier ways to do them. So in my opinion, Power Query is one of the easiest ways to do date tables. But we're gonna use Power Query today because there are templates for these already out there and you can tweak them a little bit and then reuse them however you want. We're gonna use Brian Grant's date table today because his is the best, it really is. If you think you know a better one, please let me know because I always have my eye out for these kinds of things. So we're gonna go get one of those and then I'm gonna show you how to use it. Here's our date table. It is on SkyPoint's website. This is not an endorsement for SkyPoint Cloud. It just happens to be where this date table lives at this particular point in time. We're gonna click on this, click here to download the M scripts option. I'm gonna put the link to this page in the video description and that's gonna download a zip file. In our downloads folder, we're going to extract this. So right click, extract all and open up this folder and here it is. So the California Dreamin' is the one that we want today. There's another one in there for 445 date tables. If your organization uses that, if you don't know what it is, they probably don't use it, but we're gonna use California Dreamin'. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this into my report. In Power BI, if I go to get data, and then choose the option for blank query. That'll let me paste in this code. I'm gonna go to the advanced editor and then overwrite whatever is in here and click done. And then make sure to rename your query to something that makes sense like date. You can check and see what's in here just by scrolling through it. So we've got relative date columns, we have fiscal years, we have quarters, we have months, we have weeks, relative weeks, and we have something that flags weekends and weekdays. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is scroll up to the top of the applied steps and configure the options under table setup. So this is what I mean when I say I really love this. It's organized, it makes sense. When you're looking at it, it's readable. It's honestly amazing. So we're gonna to go to the set start date and we're gonna click the year icon next to it. You wanna set this to basically whatever the first date in your data is. So my data is AdventureWorks, which is honestly kind of ancient, but I adjusted the dates on it to make it look more current. So I'm gonna set this to, I think it was 2021 and then click okay. So that's gonna be the first date in your date table. And then set the first month of your fiscal year if you're using fiscal dates. If you're not using fiscal years, you can just delete the fiscal year columns and take this out. But this is generally a really useful thing. So glance through what's in here and decide if you perhaps do or don't need all of these things. So I'll, he designed this so that all these steps, you can just remove them and it won't break the entire query. You can add columns onto this date table. So we're gonna do that a little bit later. But for right now, I'm gonna close and apply this. And then we're gonna do some relationships with our other tables in our data set. So I'm gonna to go to the model view. I created a new layout down here just so that it's less confusing for a demo, but we're gonna drag our date table onto here. And then we're gonna drag whatever tables we wanna use with this date table onto the same screen. So for me, that's sales order. And now we need to relate our date table to our sales order table. So we're gonna take the date column on the date table and relate it to whatever date we wanna use it with on our sales order table. So for me, that is order date. And you need to make sure that these column types match exactly. So make sure that they're the exact same date type. This one is date, they're formatted slightly differently, but they're both date fields. We're gonna click on save. And something that comes up a lot is that people want to measure things by two different date columns on the same table. So for example, shipping date and order date, or start date and finish date. Power BI will only let you have one active relationship with a given table at a time. That doesn't mean you can't have more than one, it just means that they can't both be active at the same time. So I've added an extra column on here called shipping date. It's not a real column in this data set. This only had one date, but just to show you how it works, we're gonna do a measure with that later. So I'm gonna relate date to shipping date and click save. So you'll see how that one has a dotted line. That means it's inactive. Our active one is the solid line. Whichever one you're gonna use the most often, make that the active one. Next, we need to mark our date table as a date table. So Power BI doesn't necessarily know that it's a date table until you tell it. What this is going to do is it's going to let you use the time intelligence functions in DAX. It also just visually make it more obvious. So if I click on the context menu for this date table, 
and then go to the option down here that is mark as date table. We're gonna turn it on, choose a date column of date, and click save. The other thing we're gonna do here is turn off the auto date time features in Power BI because those are essentially miniature lame date tables and things get confusing when you're using both at the same time. So we're going to go to the file tab and then go to options and settings, options, and then under data load, Uncheck the box next to auto date time. You can do this for both the current file and for global if you want to turn it off for everything and then click OK. So now we have a working date table. Let's go through the things that we can do with this. So if I take one of my measures, so for example, sales amount, and I'm just going to put it in a table for now, and I drop in one of our date fields. So for example, fiscal year, it's essentially going to group our measure by whatever date column we want. So I can add fiscal quarter in here, so on and so forth. The thing you'll notice is if I sort by fiscal quarter, this sort, because fiscal quarter is a text field, is sorting alphabetically. So for any of these fields that we're using that are text fields, we want to sort those columns by another column so that it sorts properly in our visualizations. So for fiscal quarter, if I select that column over here on the right, I can then go to sort by column in the toolbar and then sort it on something else. So fiscal quarter, we probably want to sort by fiscal quarter start date, that's going to give us the behavior that we want. So now you can see that these are aligned the way that they should be. So by default, this measure is just a sum of sales amount. It's using the active relationship, which was the purchase date to group these things. If we want to have a measure that groups them by a different date field, we just add a new measure. We're going to call this sales amount by shipping date. So shipping date was our other date column that we related. It's inactive right now. So what we need to do is in this measure, we need to activate that relationship. So I'm going to use calculate and I'm going to use our sales amount and then do a comma and we're going to use use relationship. So use relationship says use a different relationship than the active one. So the relationship we want to use is between the shipping date column and a comma and then the column on the other side of the relationship. So that was just date. Make sure to select the one that's at the column, not the name of the table. So that's date, date, and then close the parentheses. So now if we drop this into the table, there's our new numbers. So if I drag these two side by side, you can see that the totals are different. I guess I can set this to dollar format. Okay, so that's how to use multiple relationships with your date table. You only have to do this if the date columns that you want to use are on the same table. Other things you can do with this, if I make a line chart, we can use these date fields in a hierarchy. So I can do our sales amount and then use our year quarter. I'm going to drag this in because when I check the box next to it, it dumps it under the legend, which we don't want. And then we can do month. So for month, this month field right here is going to be like January, February, March. It doesn't have the year on it. So it's going to collapse multiple years, which is fine in a hierarchy. But if you're using it as a standalone, one of the tricks that I like to do is to use the month start date. You can format that month start date as a month year. So with this column selected, I can change the date format to March 2001. So now you can see that it's got the month and the year like that. I'm going to navigate up because that's a little bit busy. So your users can navigate up and down in the state hierarchy if they want to see things by different time periods, but most of them won't know that it exists unless you tell them that it exists. So they can go up, they can do go to next level in hierarchy and that'll go down. Or if they want to, they can do an expand all down. If you're not confident that your users are going to be able to figure this out reliably, what you can do is use a field parameter instead and make these into buttons because buttons are a little bit more user friendly. So that's what I did in this example here. So this one, you can swap these out just by clicking the buttons. So to do this, I'm just going to take this table out of here so we have some space. I'm going to do a bar chart and drop our sales amounts in. And now we need to create our field parameters. So if I just go to the search bar up here and search for field parameters, it comes up with this new parameter option here. If you click that and then select fields, this will be where we can select which fields we want people to be able to swap out in our visual. I'm going to call this date field parameter and just open up your date table and choose the things you want. So for me, maybe fiscal year, fiscal quarter, month, and date. We're going to rename a couple of these in a second. I don't like to do it here because there's a bug with this UI 
that makes some weird stuff happen. So I'm going to click create and that added a slicer to our page up here. We're going to deal with that in a second. If I select my field parameter now on the right hand side, so that's this one here. You can see the columns here. So we can rename these from here, just edit whatever is in the double quotes. So this one, if I just wanted it to be called month, I just edit this. And maybe this one we wanna call fiscal quarter. All right, so here's our slicer. So now we need to drop our field parameter into our visual. So if I select our bar chart and then drag our date field parameter into the x-axis, that'll get it in there, but we need to select something in this slicer in order for it to behave properly. So I'm just gonna select one of these temporarily. This slicer we can change to look like buttons. There's a new tile slicer that we're gonna use. I'm just gonna click that to change the slicer type to tiles. If we go into the settings for this, slicer settings, make sure it's on single select when you're using it for the axis in a chart. And then if we come down here under layout, it'll let you choose how many are in a row. So I'm just gonna go with one row, four columns. And this takes a little bit of fiddling with to make it look nice. Really, the one that's important is just to make the background color not black. So that's under buttons. If you go to the state and select the selected state, you can change the fill there. Maybe go with this one. The border radius is somewhere up here at the top under shape, rounded rectangle. And then you can adjust the height a little bit. And then we're going to center the text on the buttons. If I search for the word alignment, it'll pop up here. So that's the one under call out values. All right. So now if I swap these, you can see it changes. So that's pretty cool. If you want to do a measure that includes or excludes weekends, works very similarly. So I can do new measure. If I wanted to do sales on the weekends, I can do sales weekends only and set this equal to calculate our sales amount and I can use keep filters. So keep filters is the one that's more efficient than just adding the filter here on its own. I'm going to choose, what's it called? Week, weekday label, I think it was, is equal to weekend. I think that was right. So let's try that. Yep. So I can make that a card, whatever. You can also, another kind of interesting thing would be to just compare weekends to weekdays. So if I just drop sales amount in here and then the week weekday label under the legend you can get a comparison of weekend versus weekday okay i'm going to take that out so we have some more space if you want to have a slicer that sticks on the current quarter current week current whatever or a say page level filter that is last 30 days or anything like that you can use those relative columns on our date table. So for example, if I wanted this page to show only the last two years, I can get our relative, we use fiscal year. So fis, fis year relative num, if I set this to current year, last year, year before last year, I can do that. If you want this to be more user-friendly so that people can select something in a drop down without really knowing what they're doing, you can add a text equivalent of this. So in Power Query, if I come back here to transform data and in our date table, I can add a column choose custom column. And we're going to use that relative fiscal year column to make a friendlier version of the same thing. I want to point out here that the relative date slicer as a visual does exist. So you can use that too. It doesn't always have everything you want it to have. That's why we're doing this. For example, it doesn't know what your fiscal years are. I'm going to call this relative. For this formula, I'm going to paste in some code and then I'm going to explain it. If I start typing in the whole thing, it gets a little bit lengthy. I'm going to put this code in a blog article and put it in the video description. But what this is doing is it's saying if the relative fiscal year number is zero, then current year. If it's one, then it's next year. If it's negative one, it's last year. If it's less than negative one, then we change it into text and concatenate it with years back. And I take this and multiply it by negative one to make it a positive number because I feel like that's a little bit friendlier because it's that many years back already, right? And then if the relative fiscal year number is greater than negative one. I guess I should make this greater than one. It doesn't really matter because it's the last case, but we're going to make it into text, concatenate years ahead along with the relative number. So let me show you what this looks like. If I click OK here, you can see we get some values for the relative year. So we can use this in a slicer to select and always have it say last year. People can still change it to whatever they want, but by default, it will be set to the last fiscal year. So I'm going to close and apply this and drop it in a slicer. I'm going to make it a drop down. 
So we can set this to last year. I'm not going to do current year because this data set doesn't have any current year data, but you get the idea. So this is essentially like a sticky relative date slicer. That's everything I have for you today on date tables. Thank you to Brian Grant for making this date table available, and I hope you have a great day.